we finally got that wall studded up. Now that was a big job. It doesn't look like it, but let me tell you what. Um, putting them runners on there took a little bit of time. And then these big long studs was a bitch. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and stud these two side walls out. We'll go ahead and get all the windows done, get everything studded out. And then once that's done, we'll go ahead and frame out the windows with some steel stud track and we should be down the road on studying out the office. Now remember I told you about this right here. This is where our electrical wires are going to be going through out to the box. Of course they're not going to be that long. I just made them that long. Um, they're actually going to be like fucking right here somewhere. Right in this area. Because you can see where the box is going to end up. And the box is going to stick out a little bit. But we'll go ahead and cover that and camouflage it. You won't even know the fucking thing's there. So, we'll be cool. Don't worry. It'll really look awesome. And the construction guys, they're gone. So we got the building all built. And what we're doing now is we're putting the doors up. And let me tell you, these are some awesome doors. I want everybody to take a look at that glass panel right there. I'm putting my doors up high due to the fact that I don't want people looking in, but look at that glass panel. It's a full panel of the door itself. So that's going to be a badass situation. Now, I want everybody to take a look at this, and I want you to tell me what you think's going on over here. Is that awesome shit or what? Look at that. We got a beautiful two-tone building with beautiful trim, and we got beautiful brown doors. To match. I'm gonna go ahead and put my paint booth out here. This will be my paint booth up against that common wall. I think that's gonna really set it off nice and balance out the building. But uh, take a look at that, and yeah, those brown doors look awesome on there. So we got the door guys here. We got Mike on the ladder over there, and we got Travis over here. What's up, Travis? How you doing, bro? Doing good. How long you been putting these doors in, buddy? Oh, good. <laughs> Over 10 years. About 10 years, so you're a real hell of a door guy. We got Mike up here. How you doing up there, Mike? Good. How we looking, dude? Good. Looking good. All right, all right. So you're getting ready to put that panel in up there, the skylight panel? Yeah, the glass panel. Yeah. Now, do you get a lot of people that want to put those uh, glass panels up that high, or do they usually put them down at eye level? It just depends. People vary from any section. Yeah. So putting them up high, what, what's the uh, what's the advantage of putting them up high like that, Mike? Nobody gets to see inside the door. Yeah, you get a lot of light too, right? Yeah. So do you get more light when the glass is up high than it is down on? Yeah, you uh, get more uh, light up there. Yeah. And then these doors are made out of what? Fiberglass and? They're all made out of metal, aluminum and metal. Aluminum and metal. Now what kind of insulation are we talking about right here? They got, it's a styrofoam, it's got an R11 value. Oh, okay, so that's a thick styrofoam? Yeah. It's got R11 value. All right, buddy. It's looking good, man. Keep up the good work, Mike. All right, thanks. Now, what kind of glass? Is that glass or is that plexiglass? It's Travis? glass. Glass, glass. So that is glass. So if someone threw a rock at my glass, I'd be screwed. Yeah. I'd have a shattered piece of glass. Son of a bitch. Now, y'all didn't tell me that, guys. Yeah, it's eighth inch glass. Eighth inch? Yeah. That's some thick stuff. Now, is that double pane glass or is that... That's a single pane, eighth inch. Now, I'm sure it's tempered, am I correct? Because uh, if you actually hit that real hard and it wasn't, it, like if it was plate glass, it would break apart in two or three pieces. Yeah. So when that's when somebody hits that or if something happened to it, it would shatter like little pieces like the back glass on your car, am I right? No. It doesn't? No, it'll, it'll break off in shards. Are you serious? Yeah. So that's not even tempered glass. No. Son of a bitch. Is that expensive to replace those? No. It's like only like... Huh. It's 30 bucks, 40 bucks. 30 bucks, 40? Okay. Oh Is it easy to replace those glasses if they break? Yeah. I mean, what do you do to get them out? Pop out these mullions right here. Oh, okay. And then there's some screws holding them in or something? No, just double face tape. Huh. That's it, huh? Yep. All right. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks a lot. They're looking good, man. I love them brown doors. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You take care. You too. So everything's looking good over here at SWRNC Homestead. Um, we can't call it ranch anymore because the ranch was in Dallas. And this is the homestead because our house is actually going to be on the same property. But uh, a lot of shit's going on. A lot of stuff's getting down, getting done, getting her 
getting her and getting her to the point of saying I'm almost here so what I'm doing here is we got this wall studded out now this has been an all-day job what you're looking at from that corner over there all the way over here where I'm at we started on this around 8 o'clock this morning it's what it's about 5 30 now yeah took a 30 minute lunch so you know don't think because you're using steel studs that it's just going to go real quick we had a problem up here our uh, part of our uh, frame structure ran out and we had to add track into the ceiling that's cool and then uh, we went ahead and caught everything else up here and we're not going to go ahead and frame the windows out until we actually get ready to start sheet rocking because those things make good burglar bars so anyway this is our junction box that I've been talking about and if you look at it you can see what I'm doing here is I'm measuring these two pipes out where I want them to go and then on the side here look real close all these knockouts all right and all this is is a junction box so you can run all your wires to that box and then they're gonna run through these pipes so what I'm doing is trying to figure out and it looks like I'm gonna probably go up because if I have to knock some holes out on the top here I don't want the hole like right here you know what I'm saying so I'm gonna go up about four inches well yeah that's gonna be a that's a two and a half inch hole so we're gonna go up about six inches on that line right there and then we're gonna come over here and go six inches and look what many of the body shop girl forgot forgot to bring some sharpies I didn't forget that you did okay so we're stuck with a blue lucky we found it on the ground found it on the ground thank you very much TPI construction <laughs> so these are called the uh, male ends let me show you what's going on here uh, once we cut that out where we want it this will go through that hole and then it'll all come out together now we got lucky on what we're getting lucky on is this there's a stud right here so when I flip that over let's make sure we can catch that stud let's go ahead and line that up if I put that right there where's that stud it's way down here shit I'm gonna have to go higher see there I'm gonna have to go like seven or eight inches what are you thinking about eight probably yeah damn I'm glad I noticed that son of a bitch Let's take this baby outside and let's drill some holes. Look what Mike and Travis got. Come on over here, guys. Oh, look, it's opened. Looking nice, dude. Looking nice. Look at that. We got our first door open. Awesome. That's oh WRC right here, bro. Southwest Road Custom. Yeah. You guys are doing a great job, man. I appreciate it. Heck yeah, man. It's fantastic. Like I said, I ain't got no bitch about anything I was building except that concrete. That's going to have to be replaced. Two holes cut out. Let's uh, see what happens. All right, so there you go. Looky here. One, two. It's gonna go in there. That'll go like that. We're gonna screw them in, and down the road we go. And one thing I want everybody to know, when you're doing this, you need to use the electrical PVC glue. Alright, there is a difference, believe me. And there you yeah. go. Let's get that box mounted on there, and I think our junction box will be installed. Alright, you want to give me those rings, maybe? Those metal rings and the channel lock wires. There you go. We got the box mounted. 
Now what I'll do is when I frame around this and I do all the work I need, can you go get that vinyl tape? Remember that vinyl tape? Yeah. All right, so uh, our box is mounted. And what we're gonna do is we'll frame all this out so we can sheetrock around it. And by the time we do that, um, we will camouflage this box. And uh, you probably won't even know it's here, so yeah. So if you look right there, we got the doors. And they're brown. And they're big. And we can put a lot of stuff inside that shop once we open that big giant brown door. Wow. This is going to be our utility wall right here. When I say utility wall, we're going to have all our electrical down here. We're going to have our air compressors back here. This is going to be our yard back in here. Once we get rid of that septic tank, we're going to backfill all this. It's going to look nice and awesome. But uh, we're looking at that door. Looking at that door again. I think the colors I picked came out awesome. And uh, I didn't know what it was going to look like with three colors, but um, I think it came out pretty badass. Yeah. If you're out there in the Western Slope and you need a building built, call TPI Construction, Grand Junction, Colorado. And if you're looking for overhead doors, E and E overhead doors. Those are the guys. They're going to get it done and do it right. I went ahead and returned the toilet that I had. And I went ahead and bought another toilet. Now, I want everybody to take a close look at the tank size on that toilet. You can see that it's very, very small. And the reason is, is because our pipe is really pushed into that corner very tight. Now, the calculations that we made earlier weren't exactly proper. And we were basically going off the other toilet that I purchased. And then I found out that there's actually two different offsets that you can buy. There's a 10 inch and a 12 inch. And the toilet that I had here last time was a 12 inch offset and not a 10 inch. Now, let me tell everybody what the deal is here. Um, from the very back side of the toilet, right there where my hand is, and then all the way in to those mounting holes in the center of the flush section there is exactly 10 inches so for this toilet here to fit right there we need 10 inches from that wall or 10 inches from that wall and then this toilet should fit but the other problem we have is if you look at the width of that bowl there all right you can see how wide that bowl is and also how wide the base of this toilet is and then of course you got to put the tank in there with all of that. When I measured from that wall there to this wall here it came out to ten and a half inches and then from that wall to that wall was 13 inches and then I went ahead and took one inch off um, to compensate for the R panel that I'm going to be putting up on these walls and then that brought me down to nine and a half inches and twelve inches. The situation really is is that I wanted the toilet to face this way, not this way. Because, once again, there's our sink drain. And then here is our shower drain, if we were going to put a shower in it. Now, they did box in the shower where we could actually uh, concrete that back in, move it over this way a couple inches or that way an inch, just whatever. But the sink drain is inside the wall. And to me, this all looks really, really close. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that flange off all the way flush with the floor. And then we're going to see what happens from there. All right, we got this cut off. Let's see what happens from here. Now, one good thing that we got is if you look at this right here, you can see that many of the body shop girl wrapped that really good with insulation. So that's going to give us uh, a gap around our three inch pipe. Um, we can clean that insulation out around there and the flange should slide right on. So once again, I wanted the toilet to face this way here. 
um, from this wall to that wall. But I don't know if that's possible, and we might have to put it from this wall to that wall. So I'm going to go ahead and measure to the exact center of that pipe. And if we measure exactly to the center of that, if I'm looking straight down, it's ten and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and put a mark here. Um, I will say this though, if you've never done this before, don't be afraid to tackle the job. I am the type of person that always ends up doing everything on my own. Because, for some reason, I can't find people to do shit for me, so I end up doing it myself. Now, if we look at the bottom of this toilet right here, um, you're going to see the mounting holes that actually hold it down right here and right here. Um, just to make everything clear for you, those holes are precisely lined up in the center of the flush hole on the toilet. So what we'll do is we'll flip the toilet over and then we will line these mounting holes up right here with the lines that we drew on the floor. And once we line those lines up with our mounting holes, that's going to tell us if we're going to be right in the center and where our toilet's going to end up on our walls. We might even have to go out of the corner right here and come out this way. Which is really actually fine with me um, because then it'll actually give us an even amount of leg room or ass room you might call it or any kind of room to clear ourselves and to feel comfortable as we are doing our thing on the toilet. So I'm going to go ahead and flip my toilet over and then I'm going to go ahead and line up the lines just like I said I would and then I'm going to, okay this line isn't long enough, not long enough over here because we got to bring our uh, toilet to the center here and okay it lines up good here And it actually lines up good there. But the problem we have is when I'm sitting on the toilet, I'm sitting at an angle like this. I'm not really sitting comfortable and I'm cramped up in the, you see what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and move the toilet the other way see what kind of action we got going from that angle. So now I'm sitting down on the toilet and I feel pretty comfortable. I kind of feel cramped up against the wall here. But it's a doable situation because this is just a, what can I say, temporary thing. We're not going to be out here, you know, sitting on the toilet doing our thing all day long. Um, this is the type of deal that, you know, it's an emergency deal. I need to do what I got to do. And I'm going to have the equipment here to do what I got to do if that comes to that point. Um, it really kind of screws us up because if we look over here, you can see uh, this is our shower. And if the sink was supposed to go right here. How the fuck all this was supposed to work? I don't fucking know. I can't find people to do shit for me, so I end up doing it myself. But I can tell you one thing, it's fucked. I can't find people to do shit for me, so I end up doing it myself. So we can actually do something with that angle right there if we want to. Doing it myself. Or the other option we have myself is that we can twist it like this and try to put it in the corner like that, possibly, and I gotta get down here and see if I'm lined up, which I'm not. I gotta pull it out this way. Okay, so now I'm exactly lined up. I'm doing it myself. So that's exactly on top of the flush drain hole. And if I put it like that, to be honest with you, that would probably be the angle to go with. Um, and that's only if our tank will fit on there. So I end up doing it myself. So if 
if I set my tank right there, and then I kind of get it where it's supposed to be even in the corner, which it's really not even in the corner due to the fact that it's 10 here and 13 here, but we can kind of like get it in the corner. Um, I'm still having enough room here to possibly put some corrugated steel, but I got a big gap here, which is cool. And I can probably, you know, move it and manipulate it around where it will work at that situation right there. I can't find people to do shit for me, so I end up doing it myself. So I think that we have solved our problem on the toilet situation. We don't have to build the floor up and it's a doable situation. It's not the situation that I actually wanted, but it's a situation that says it'll work. So I'm really not uh, overjoyed and happy about the toilet situation over here at SWRC Homestead slash DIY Auto School because of the fact that I wanted it to be my way. I wanted to have it done the way I wanted it done myself. Not the way Mr. Plumber Guy came in here and said, let's put all this in a line and not give you enough fucking run for a shower, asshole. Myself. Because he fucked us around. Do it. And when you have other people. Myself. Do stuff for you. Do it myself. Always remember one thing. It's your shit that they are messing with, not theirs. I can't find people to do shit for me, so I end up doing it myself. So when you have them do shit for you, have them do the shit right. Because if the shit ain't done right, the toilet ain't gonna flush, bitch! track down on the floor and I got to make some studs that will fit in between the 12 foot uh, beam or girder whatever you call that and the four foot girt so there's a four foot girt there and then there's a 10 foot I don't know is that 10 or that's 10 feet yeah that's got to be so a bitch I thought we were going to have to go 12 feet up we're not going 12 feet let me measure that and see what we got. Uh, I think that's fucking eight feet, dude. But that's cool. Uh, yeah, that's eight feet. Okay, so we're gonna put, we're gonna go up ten feet, which is awesome. I like that. Um, I didn't want to go twelve feet, but what I gotta do is I gotta make some stud extensions in between this wall right here. And the reason I gotta do that is because I gotta have something to connect my ceiling to. So I'm gonna go up 10 feet. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go up to 10 feet, which is right here. And then what I'll do is I'll bring it down two feet, which would be, and I don't know if you can see me way over there. Uh, we'll come down, well that can't be right. That's got to be, hold on a minute, is that fucking 10 feet or 9 feet or what? Now I'm fucking... Okay, that's 8 feet. Okay, that, yeah, we're going to bring the ceiling to right here, but we're going to be up 2 feet, and that way I can make a, uh, a safety wall, a 2 foot safety wall around my storage up on top, basically like I have at my shop now. I just got done framing out the storage room and the bathroom with steel studs. Now, you can see where it's going up 10 feet. And that interior wall, which is a uh, load-bearing wall, that means that there's going to be weight on it, um, is only at 8 feet. So, the rooms themselves is only going to be at 8 feet, like I was telling you. 
And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a band around the edges of it here. And then we'll go eight feet all the way around. Just like that. And then I'll go ahead and have uh, room to go ahead and put my um, studs in here, my floor, my subfloor you might call it. And then once that's done, I think we're done. So, SWRC DIY Auto School is looking good. I like it. I will tell you that studding out these interior walls here was a lot worse. This was a lot more work putting up all these studs in here and studding this out than it was doing what I'm doing in there. So, yeah, I'm glad this is done. This took two and a half days to do this room right here, and we're not even done yet. We still haven't even done the windows. Um, and we got a few other little issues with the corners of these walls over here. We're going to have to figure out how to do something with that, but we'll get it done because that's what it's all about. Um, I want to apologize to everybody out there that I'm not showing you me actually working. Um, I'm on a time schedule on this and for me to actually film everything that I'm doing here, uh, it would take me two or three days to film all this just to show you what I'm doing. So. You basically get the idea what's going on. Let me go ahead and finish this out, and I think we'll have just enough daylight to do that. It's like 4 o'clock right now. It gets dark around 7. And if we don't have enough daylight, we'll finish it tomorrow. Because we're getting ready to leave either tomorrow evening or Monday morning. We have got to get back to Dallas ASAP. Well, we finally made it back from Moab, Utah. We're out in Dallas, Texas now. 